Hi everyone, it's Shamila Ramjawan from the Red Corner Show. My guest today is Evelyn Marupeng, who is an entrepreneur and online talk show host, which is going to be very interesting because we do the same thing, and a finalist on Stir Starters. Hello Evelyn, how are you doing? Hi Dr. Shamila, um, thanks for having me first of all. I am well. I'm just a bit hot because Kimberly is yeah, it's very hot, yeah. Well, you're looking hot. I mean, if I have to say so. <laughs> Thank you. So do you. You look beautiful. Thank you, Evelyn. It's so nice having you on the chat. And, you know, like I said, we're both doing the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a passion, and we'll go into that just now. But uh, just uh, to start off, maybe just tell us a little bit about who exactly is Evelyn Maruping. Okay, where do we start? <laughs> um, so I'm Evelyn Marupin. I am 34 years of age and I'm from Kimberley. I already mentioned that. And I am a mother to a handsome 12-year-old boy. His name is Devon. Um, I am like the middle child, the eldest of three daughters. And then I have two in the middle. And um, I, I grew up in Kimberley all my life, uh, but I find myself in recent years traveling between Johannesburg and Cape Town um, because of my career path, which is in the media. And um, so we go where the, you know, where, it, where it's buzzing. And um, yeah, I am a little diamond from the Diamond City, but I am from a dusty street in the Diamond City. So I am that little diamond in the dust, yeah, from Homeville Extension. So that is who I am. What else can I say? Oh, I talk extremely a lot. I can talk. That's why I have a talk show. So I can utilize it better, my, my words. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's just me in a nutshell. That's wonderful, Eve. I'm going to call you Eve. Is that okay? Perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. I would love it if everyone can start calling me Eve. There you go. It's out there. So everyone's going to start calling you Eve from now on once they start watching this. So um, just back to talking about your passion uh, in media. Uh, take me through that journey. How did it all begin? So basically for me, um, from a very young age, I always loved storytelling. Storytelling is a gift. It's, it's a gift from God. Um, you know, if I meet interesting people like yourself, I would want to tell the world about this awesome Dr. Sharmila and she's doing this. And um, I'm always inspired by people around me, um, places, um, experiences. And I found people that can inspire them um, stories that will transform people, you know, the mindset, because if you're sharing your story or an experience, somebody, even if it's just one person, you're speaking to somebody. So that's, that's where my passion for media comes from. It's not about being the spotlight. It's about well, how can I use my influence in the spotlight to bring other people with me to talk to the world. So that's in a nutshell, my, my passion for media. Uh, I can't hear. I lost you a bit there because I'm not sure what's going on. I, I think there's just uh, the Wi-Fi signal that's uh, dropping on my side. Um, okay. I hope that we caught the gist of what you said there. Just going back to uh, the passion that you have, uh, you know, it's it's okay to be in the spotlight because you're doing such incredible work and you're inspiring so many people, you know, um, in this journey. So, you know, at your age, um, achieving so much and being such an accomplished woman, 
take me through your talk show, you know, um, is it Talking to Eve? Yes, that is correct. So take me through that. How did that start? So Talking to Eve started in 2015. Um, at the time, I was working at um, on a local soapy called Getrouwd met Rugby. It's an Afrikaans soapy. So I got to meet some really interesting actors. And, um, you know, I wanted to, I got into conversations with them. And, you know, you really pick up on interesting stories that the world needs to hear. Like I said, my passion for media comes from inspirational people and um, using media to convey that message. So talking to Eve is something, it's a talk show. I always wanted to be a talk show host from a very young age. So, um, and I know there's a difference between, um, or for the people who don't know, there's a difference between presenting and hosting a talk show. It's, it's, it, there's a fine line um, when it comes to the two. So um, when talking to Eve started in 2015, it started on YouTube. And YouTube was not working for me at the time. But also I looked at the content and I was like, no, this is not um, content for online viewers. You know, your online people are people who want something quick, something short. Um, they don't want long form content because they want to be able to stand in the bank and quickly watch that interview. But also it was about um, zooming in on a broader story. Um, instead of interviewing Dr. Sharmila about her whole life, um, rather get to the crux of it and say, how did you get to this point um, that you wanted to get people on your show to promote themselves, to market themselves through the Red Corner show? So back then, I was still covering like a broad spectrum of a story. Instead of, I remember, I interviewed this one guy and um, he robbed a bank and he was in, in jail for many years. <laughs> yeah, we can laugh about it. Now, but he loves it too. And I listened to the interview and I'm like, you know what? So many people go, they rob a bank and then they go to jail. Lots of people go to jail. People don't want to know that. They want to know how did you survive jail? You know, that kind of thing. So I took the broader story and zoomed in on what is it that people want to know? So I paused a little. And um, now during, in 2017, I picked it up a little bit. And now during lockdown, it was the perfect time to start with my interviews. But I was like, now it's lockdown. How will I do interviews with people? So that's when I started it on Instagram because then I discovered, you know what? I'm, every day I'm online watching other people cooking live on Instagram. I might as well connect with my guests live on Instagram. So that's how Talking to Eve started on Instagram because for me now, um, I can access anyone anywhere in the world. You don't have, we don't have to be in a studio setup. Yes. Um, similar to what you're doing with, with our Zoom interview, um, instead of saying, oh, now you must fly to Joburg or you must fly to Kimberley. It cuts out all of that. Yes. And it reaches that particular audience. So that is where Talking to Eve is at the moment. But for 2021, we want to take Talking to Eve to the next level. So we want to travel throughout um, all the nine provinces. We want to bring along some influential people who people want to listen to. Um, we want to, you know, tackle topics that speaks to the ordinary person um, to bring relevance to the talk show and then do that as live recordings. And um, later on, they distribute it, you know, online because I've got a platform called Pink TV um, that is very similar to YouTube, but very different to YouTube at the same time. So that's what we want to, that's where we want to take um, talking to Eve. So th that sounds wonderful. You know, it's very similar to what I've been doing. You know, I've been out in communities, I've been interviewing people, I've been doing all the groundwork and then COVID struck. And then we thought, you know, let's just do something different. And uh, yes. just going back to you and Pink TV, uh, that is something that you started. What was yes. that all about and where is that now? So Pink TV, I launched it last year in November. And um, Pink actually derives from my surname, Maru Ping. And it's also like a little notification when your phone goes off, it's a little ping. So I, I connected all of that to you know, stories that at the inspiration that flows from within myself, but also linking it to technology, you know, the 
the little sound that your phone makes when you get a notification and something and you know that so um i launched it last year and um, before pink tv it was called belief which means experience northern cape but um we had a lot of logistical um you know challenges um filming and we got so many invites come and cover this come and speak to that person and when we launched i you know introduced a different um structure so i opened up the platform to other content creators to be able to start their own channels and everything that didn't work for me on youtube because pink tv birthed from frustration frustration that i can cannot get my content on mainstream because mainstream is more for your established um you know faces uh, it's a sbc now sorry sbc i'm just making an example they will look at me like who is she i'm not a known face so for me i was so frustrated i'm like you know i've got all these brilliant um concepts productions that i want to do but where do i take it how long am i going to wait before a channel says yes let's do it and then there's also the thing of um losing the rights of your production because now a channel commissions it and you lose the rights to it because i mean you're for you know brainwash you and take a lot away from you so it birthed from that frustration but also everybody was you know reference referring me to youtube i mean even i youtube for me was like okay take it to youtube your content what you want to do but youtube had too many red tape if i can call it that um 4000 watch hours 10000 subscribers before you can monetize and for me i just felt like you put in so much work and i was this i want to go to bed knowing this is what i did for for the day and be able to generate income from it but if i'm going to do it on youtube as a south african the platform is not for south africans a few south africans make it you know if you really you have a huge following you invest a lot in for me it was like you know what youtube all the red tape so pink tv um offers content creators the opportunity to have your own channel and you can instantly monetize it so you don't need obviously you yourself will know that you know i must build my my viewership if i want to make money so it gives you the freedom to build kind of like your own business on a platform because we are a distribution platform so you have your channel and you build your channel you build um your own you decide your your income because it 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 all it's all about how hard do you work you know that's how pink tv came about and um, with star starters i had to put everything on hold including talking to eve because i wanted to give 100% to star starters okay, i want we'll to get to that I we'll get to that just now i just want to digress a little bit so you're a township yes. what kept you motivated and focused to get to where you are because i mean you've gone through leaps and bounds to get to where you are and you've done so much just coming from a township and having that background just take me through that journey because that is the interesting part of your life <laughs> yeah no that is definitely interesting that's where the diamond comes in where i say a diamond in the dusty streets so um for me it was very difficult um growing up in a township um but as you know they in every single township there are you know young people with potential but what kept me motivated was my vision i had a vision i knew i wanted something better for myself at the time i couldn't piece everything together to say you know this is this is how i'm going to get out of it i just knew like there is more beyond the dusty streets there is way more um beyond you know the cracks of home, you know the home um we grew i i mean i we stayed like forever in a three uh, not a three bedroom house a three room house and um I never felt inferior. I never felt like we are poor. I always just knew that this is not my final destination. There's a better life out there. And um I I would read a lot and and I would google a lot, but before google in 
I would read a lot and, you know, about inspirational people. So I would get my inspiration from if it's a teacher at the time um, or a nurse, because in, where, where I come from, you still find a lot of people that are teachers because sometimes young people, if you don't travel outside of your province to the metropolitan cities like Johannesburg or Cape Town, um, you don't think there's anything else. You don't think you can become more than going to the army or to the, um, into the police. Um, but as soon as you start traveling or your whole horizon, it broadens, you see something different. So I just, I just knew that I just had this vision. I could see that there is a, a, another life waiting for me. There's a different life waiting for me, um, a better life that is waiting for me. And for me, um, growing up the way I did in poverty, harsh, harsh reality of realities of poverty. For me, it was a building block. So I would look at my circumstances and say to myself, I need to do better. And I had an amazing mother who made sure that we get education. She's not educated. And, um, you know, she just made sure that all the children get education. So she supported even if she didn't understand at, at, at times what it is that I want to do, she supported it. I remember I was, um, I was 17, just finished school. And I said to her, I saw this ad in the newspaper, um, a presenting course in Johannesburg. I want to do it. I've never been to Johannesburg. And my mother was like, you don't know anyone Johannesburg is, you know, we associate Johannesburg with crime and people going missing. And I'm only 17 years old. I don't know anyone. And I said to her, but I want to do it. And it was 7,500 rand at the time. And she was like, I don't even have that kind of money. I still don't know where my mother got the money. But I, all I know is I went to Johannesburg and I did the seven weeks presenting course. And from there, my first traveling outside of the province, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go to where the opportunities are. And that's what I've been doing ever since, like up until now. I go, if the opportunity is there, I make it. I make it the mission to get there. That is amazing. What a story. And thank you to your mama, because look at you now, Eve. <laughs> um, just, um, you started this awards, Fabulous Women Awards, where I was actually a judge this year. Yeah. So tell me about that. How, how, you know, how did that all begin? Okay, so um, as a finalist or contestant, starting with Stair Starters, um, the core, the, the you know, the heart of stair starters is to also instill in the girls that you're not just going to be a pretty face in the media. How are you going to use your celebrity status to make a difference? How are you going to change the world around you? How are you going to change, make a difference in your community? You know, so what stair starters um, did is they adopted a charity organization of choice. So every year um, as a contestant, we get to raise funds for this organization called the Fabulous Girl Foundation, um, based in Kuruman in the Northern Cape. So I was very happy about that. Um, and I'm not the cookie type girl to bake cookies and salad or do a raffle or sell t-shirts. So I was like, what am I going to do for my fundraiser? So I know that I love events and I love celebrating women. So I said to myself, why not marry the two? Celebrate, recognize, and award women in aid of charity. What better way for women to nominate another woman and their money goes towards supporting other women, less fortunate than, than themselves. And in the process, we're celebrating phenomenal, fabulous women around South Africa. And you know what? It started just as it was my fundraising idea, and then it just blew up. And um, Stair Starters came to me and the Fabulous Girl Foundation. And Stair Starters said to me, the producer said, um, we would like to partner with you to make this part of our annual um, program. That's obviously, obviously it's your brainchild. You will run it, but we would like to align it with our brand because our brand is about women empowerment. Fabulous Girls is about taking girls and teaching them to use their time to either raise funds or do good because we have to go paint we had to you know um do drives there were so many things that we did with stair starters so for me it was the perfect platform because you know i wanted this um she's fabulous to be aligned with um similar brands and a powerful brand and it was a it was the best thing that could have happened because i mean so many people saw it 
And yesterday, unfortunately, they couldn't show um, part of the awards on TV, but it's going to air in January. It's going to start airing, then they will show the awards, um, all the winners and just how it all went down. So we are very excited about that as well. I was so sad. I was so sad that I couldn't make it to the event because I was in Cape Town shooting drivers. I was sad too. You couldn't make it. <laughs> yes, I was. You know, I would have loved the event. Um, all the glitz and glamour, and um, oh, yeah. and honoring the winners as well. You know, with being a judge, that would have been such an honor to be there and and uh, see how it all you know panned out. But well yes. done on that. And you know, I wish you every success going forward. And I'm sure it's going to just go into this one big giant of a success. Thank you so much. I believe in that. And thanks to women like you, when I approached you to become, you know, a judge, you said, yes, let's do it, you know? So thank you that you came on board and, and just helped us in that regard. It's only a pleasure. Just going back to Star Starters, how did that start? You know, what actually made you enter? So um, I saw the advert on TV, on Via TV, and I was like, what did I just see? Is that a show that will actually the winner becomes the presenter? And then I missed the details and I saw it again. I'm like, okay, let me take down the details. I took down the name and I went on the website and I was like, wow, this is something that I want to align myself with. It's not a beauty contest. It's not a beauty pageant. It's not a modeling show. Um, it is an opportunity for young women between the ages of 20 to 35 to enter the industry, um, the entertainment industry, and the winner becomes the present. And I was like, that is exactly what I need right now. Because, you know, when 2020 started, I, I spoke life into 2020 for myself. I said, God, this is my year. And I didn't even know about COVID-19. I didn't know about lockdown that was going to, you know, come down on us. I just knew that 2020 was my year. And then Stair Starters, I entered in February. And then um, we started with about, there was 250 um, entries. From the 250, 120 was there for the first um, um, filming. It was cut down to 60. And then I made the top 30. And then I made the top 12. And now I can officially say that I'm one of the top three charity winners for Stan Starters. Wow, that is amazing. Congratulations. And congratulations Thank to you in the top 12 as well. I mean, Thank you, know, you so much. We always say if you don't win a pageant, it doesn't mean that you don't have a crown because we all have exactly. invisible crowns. And it doesn't mean because you didn't win Stan Starters that you have to end your journey there. Just go on, my girl. The world is your oyster. I mean, I am talking to Eve. So I have a brand that I need to push. And so for me, what I also said to, to, to um, the judges in the interview, I said to them when they asked me, so if you don't win, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle it? And I said to them, the fact that I'm sitting here, I'm already a winner. Absolutely. Because Stair Starters empowered me. Stair Starters gave me exposure, uh, networks. Stair Starters taught me that I must not wait for an opportunity like Stair Starters, you know, similar opportunities, but I must create my own opportunity. So what I do um, with my um, title in the top three is totally up to me. I need to make it work, you know, and um, it was a blessing for me that I started talking, that I picked up talking to Eve again this year and started it on Instagram. Um, I must say to you, it's, it's, it was the best experience. I mean, I never thought I would get access to celebrities without being a face on TV because, you know, celebrities want to be associated with, you know, someone they know, someone they trust, someone show they know, they won't just say yes to being on a show. Um, there was this one actress, very popular girl, um, uh, Tem Tema, Tema, um, and she said to me, I inboxed her on Instagram, and um, she said to me, you know what, I was not going to do the interview. Um, I read your message, and I was going to stop, just to say that I'm not doing any media interviews because I'm not doing any media interviews at the moment. But you know, the way you ended your, your request to me, um, you said, I hope, I trust my, um, what did I say? I trust my request will find your favor. And she said that made me say yes. 
So all these celebrities I, I gained access to, I got to interview. For me, it was the biggest achievement um, in my career because they didn't know me. Even the, the twins I interviewed this afternoon, um, I received this press release on Sunday and um, I said to them, not to them, to the publicist, I want to interview them because I always wanted to interview twins on my show and they have a story to tell and um, they didn't know me and they just said yes so for me for me that is you know that i see as a win winning in my own um how can i put this now in my own space where i move and um stair starters really gave me more exposure um a broader network of people and i will forever ever be grateful to that and i, I mean 2021 we continue the journey with the new group of girls um us we will still continue on the show uh, more as mentors now on the show so that will be absolutely amazing um so i will forever be grateful to to staff starters and i mean i met you because of staff starters yes. if they didn't have staff starters and i was not a contestant she's fabulous would not be there and i would never have met you absolutely. and look where i am now on your show absolutely thank you for that but if you um you know with successes and um all the good things that come our way there's also ups and downs and lots of challenges so what did you face along the way maybe some challenges that really stands out for you um you know the biggest challenge that really stands out for me is um not always having the finances to to do what you want to do and i'm not talking about buying clothes or all of that i'm talking about um investing into my dream but i have been so so blessed um i think i am extremely extremely blessed and i don't think i realize how blessed i am that um i have people um people i know who invest a lot of money into my dreams and then people i don't know they don't know me and i make a phone call and they say, oh, I follow you on Facebook. Yes, um, how much do you need? I'll, that's fine, I'll sort that out. So in particular with Stair Starters, the biggest challenge for me with Stair Starters was um, when I had to travel to Johannesburg a lot. And I didn't have money sometimes to go. Um, so, but, but I just knew that I had to be there. And you know, the beautiful thing that, that, that that stairs that came out of stairs starters is the sisterhood there's a very strong sisterhood and one of the girls who's actually the charity winner well deserved she would say to me can i buy your ticket you know to come so with all those challenges and it's been like that for most of my life um my challenges was always financial um not i won't say support but my own finances to be able to invest into my own dreams. So there was always people behind the scenes investing in me, investing into my dreams. Even when I went to go study, I always, oh, I must tell you this, this is what stands out for me the most. Um, so when I was in high school, um, do you know AFDA, the film school? Yes. Yes. So yes. you know it's very expensive. Yes. So I was, I was, I was in high school in grade 10. And I read about AFDA because I would research, okay, film schools, acting schools, where can I go study when I'm done with school or can I do some? Because in school, I, I wanted to start doing part-time lessons in acting, presenting. And um, I would always stumble on AFDA. And what I started doing from grade 10, I started applying to AFDA. So then they would send me the application forms and it would say 18,000 rand per term. Goodness. And I would fill out the application form. I look at the application form, I'm like, but my mother doesn't have this money. My father doesn't have this money. Nobody in my family that has this money. What am I gonna do? And then I take the application form and I put it under the bed. Cause that's, a, I don't know if it's a colored thing or what, but then we, we like to stack things under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. so i would put the application form under the bed i did that every single year for three years and then after school obviously i was like 
you know what, I need to, I, a lot of things happened, life happened, and um, I, I did that little presenting course, I volunteered at the radio station at the hospital, and 10 years later, I saw this advert in the library in Kimberley, and it said, after doing a seven weeks course in Kimberley, after has never ever done that in the history of, of the Institute and they're doing it for the first time and they're doing it in Kimberley. Don't you think that was divine intervention? Absolutely. You know, when you we spoke about putting the application forms under the bed, I was actually going to say, you know, believe in divine intervention. And here you tell me this is what's wow. happening. Wow! Yes. Really? We are so in tune. But anyways, 10 years later, this advert came um, and, and mind you, the closing date was like the next day. And there is a list of things they wanted. And I was like, I need to do this. I, I filled in the application forms. I dropped it. And um, my first day in the interview, one of the people, local sports, arts and culture, because a few months before these applications, I, I just went into the office and I said, I want to make a documentary and I want you to give me money. And they looked at me like, okay, like I was, you know, crazy. So when I walked into that interview, he was sitting there and he said, wow, I was hoping to see you in this interview. And then the guy from Avda, I said to them, you know what? I always told my mother that Avda will, that Joba will come to Kimberley. And, my, and I mean, my mother didn't understand it, but I was like, no, Joba will come and find me in Kimberley. Long story short, um, I ended up doing my seven weeks, not knowing that um, they were actually observing us. So four of us, after the seven weeks, we were awarded a fully paid bursary for four years to do our honors. Oh in my Philippine goodness. TV. How amazing. Like I, studied, well uh, yo, I studied in Cape Town for three years. It still felt like I was dreaming. In my third year, I was like, you're not dreaming. You're really studying it after. I didn't pay a cent. And I remembered all those letters I used, all the application forms I used to put away and say to God, my mother doesn't have this money, but I know I want to go to after. And it was after, and it was Big Fish. You know, Big Fish, the film school that recently closed. Yes. So um, I also applied to Big Fish. But that was months before after, before the after advert. And you know what? When I started it after that January, Big Fish Film School came back to me and said, we're giving you a bursary. My so goodness. I was like, oh, wow. So I had to choose. So I stayed with after. Yes. I think that's where your loyalty actually lies, right? Because <laughs> they came to you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Exactly. Awesome. Well done. I mean, what a journey. It's so interesting. I could go on to uh, chatting to you and listening to you. Eve, <laughs> um, you started a new venture, Africa she Travel. Now, going from media to travel, um, take me through that. Take me through the, the change, the, the shift. Yes. In the thinking, uh, how did it all start? <laughs> I actually said to somebody today, um, I want to, I don't want to associate, I want people to know that Africa Chick Travels um, belongs to me. Um, I want it to be a, a silent venture, make, you know, doing its own thing there on the side. So Africa Chick Travels, um, first of all, I love traveling, but I can never afford to just travel for the fun of it. So it's always worth um, opportunities like stair starters who took us to so many places. It's always worth work or I have to go attend some summit. So I'm always, you know, traveling. And um, people started to say that, you know, people, my friends from Facebook and just people you connect with on Facebook. Whenever they see me, they will be like, you are always traveling. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And then people will be like, well, you know, I did Johannesburg yesterday. Oh my word, now you're in Cape Town. Now you're Kimberly. So, and then people would ask me, where is this place? How can I get to that place? Can you help me get to that place? I would love to do that. And my last trip now was um, actually Stair Starters. It was a team building weekend that one of the um, contestants, one of the finalists, um, she hosted us on their farm. So we all hosted road shows. So I invited the, the top 12 to Kimberly. I got sponsors, the Northern Cape Tourism Authority, 
So we did a whole tour. They spent a whole weekend here. And I looked at myself so proud and I said, but I can do this. And then our last um, team building um, on this farm, um, I wanted to use a hashtag. And, I, and because when we arrived, the finalists, there was written, um, Stair Starters Chick Challenge. And I wanted to use that hashtag. And um, Sharanae's father said to me, no, 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 say Africa Chick Challenge. I was like, And then I started playing around with the idea because I always wanted to start a travel show, always, always like a TV show. And um, not so, not necessarily a business, but a TV show. And um, that's when, when I came back a few days later, um, just playing around with ideas. That's how Africa Cheek Travel started. And it's, it's spelled as A-F-R-I-Q-K-A. So it's that Africa and Chick is like C H I Q. So yeah, so that's how it started. So Africa Chick Travels will actually be um, more like a, a travel company, but then from time to time we will film, we will do travel content with people who wants to um, be on, you know, on TV or on social media. So it will be. So it's still content. It will still be content. But for people to respect other people's privacy, it will just be like playing travel weekends. We will focus on three things. So we will do um, uh, challenge weekends where girls can challenge themselves and do things they've never, ever done. That also emanates from a program that I wanted to do at some point. So I'm incorporating incorporating it into this thing then we will have um, walkthroughs where we will go to historical places um, and learn more about historical places and then we will just do normal girls weekends away where young professional so it's for young professional women where young professional women just connect network and have fun and get to know somebody else in another sector or in, your, in the same sector so that is basically um, the Chick, Africa Chick Travels concept. It sounds like the spirit of just woman empowerment. I can see it there along those yes. lines of what oh, you just mentioned. Oh, <laughs> yes, well done and congratulations and I wish you everything of the best. I know it's going to be a huge success. Hopefully um, I will be on one of your programs as well. Please, yes. I remember, we were supposed to do an interview at some point too, but you're so busy. So we're like, okay, I'll wait. But your interview, I think I want to do um, when we do our travels, we're talking to Eve. Awesome. Because I think you have so much to bring to, to an audience. Oh, thank you so much. And I also love travel. So let's do that. Um, let's hope yes. COVID 19 is going to be something of the past soon so we can get back to our travels and our normal living, which is not going to be the same anytime soon, but you know, we're just very hopeful at this point in time. So um, Eve, just going uh, back to your chat, um, where do you see yourself in a few years time? You've got so much happening at the moment. Okay, I see myself as a media mogul. That's where I see myself. Um, I see myself, um, traveling globally, just um, using all the wealth that God will give me and making a difference, you know. Um, I want to be a philanthropist. I want to make a difference. I don't want money for myself. I want money that I can use for myself, but I want lots of money so that I can share that money. Um, I want to inspire girls around the world. Um, I want to, you know, I had this thing called Spark, She Sparkles. So now I want to do She's Fabulous Teens. So just a different program where we get teen girls together because the one thing that I want to instill in teen girls is that they, for them to become the best version of themselves. But I want to work with teen girls that comes from the community that I come from, you know, um, similar communities because those girls are the girls that are so fragile that just needs to be incubated. So I want to incubate them and then I want women like yourself and all the women that I just connect with to, to help me just, you know, walk this journey with these girls in the townships to, to get them to a certain point in their lives and say, now you can fly. 
Oh, I love that. I love that. And I'm definitely in. And I think a whole lot of women that's going to listen to this chat and that's listening are going to be in as well. So th that's what it's all about. You know, we collaborate and we make a success of these journeys and we just mm -hmm. go with the empowerment because that's what we want. You know, uh, we want to empower leaders of tomorrow. But just oh, yes. very quickly in closing, Eve, um, your message to the young girls out there that will be following this journey and possibly your journey as well. Yes. So my message would be, I always say to, to the young girls, don't compete with the next girl. Don't ever compete with the next girl. The person you need to compete with is yourself because you need to better yourself. So you need to look in the mirror and say, mm -mm, girl, you need to pull up your socks. Girl, this is not where life is supposed to take you. So don't compete with yourself and don't use your circumstances. And I'm not talking about just poverty because you can get a girl who comes from a very rich family, but she's still disconnected. She still has issues that she's dealing with. So I'm talking to every single girl with different circumstances. Never ever use it as an excuse not to make it in life because you will find there are girls who grew up without no parents but they made it. There are girls who grew up with no money, but they made it. There are girls who grew up and they were abused and neglected. Some were thrown like on the street. Some came from or orphanages, but they made it. So what I will say to the girls is find your inspiration. Find what inspires you and fill yourself up with that inspiration to take on the journey, your own journey, and see every single opportunity as the next best opportunity leading up to the ultimate opportunity. Love it. Great messaging there. And I'm sure that a lot of these young girls should be actually following you because you're such an inspiration. Thank you. And you can be a role model for so many of these young people out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shamila. That means a lot coming from you. It's only a pleasure. Evelyn Maruping, thank you so much for joining me on the chat. And um, I love talking to you. It's been such a wonderful chat. I wish you everything of the best. I know there's so much that you want to do and uh, you're going to achieve a lot. And South Africa, look out for this young woman because there's just so much that she's going to accomplish. And I wish you everything of the best going forward. And I want to thank you. Thank you for the well wishes. Thank you for having me on your show. I mean, there are 7.3 billion people in the world that you can speak to. And you picked me from all of them to talk to me. So thank you for giving me this platform to just share my story and share inspiration. And all the best to you and with your endeavors. And may your territory just enlarge. And um, yeah, and, and you're doing absolutely an amazing thing. When you explained to me yesterday or the day before what your platform is all about, I was like, we need more women like her. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, no, definitely we have to meet soon. Um, I think there's so much we can do together as well in business and collaborate. So, yes, everybody watch the space. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.